Hi folks, in this video I'm going to be covering how I paint the grey worn black leather components of this orc boy. So without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out with, I'm going to be applying an all over base coat of matte black from scale 75 over all the areas that I want to be black on this model. And the reason I've chosen the scale 75 matte black is that when it dries, it reads as a super dark gray rather than as an obvious black. I do find that a lot of miniature black paint end up being a satin or a gloss finish and when I'm trying to do a weathered and worn black finish I find that the starting point is often too shiny for the effect that I want to go for. If you don't have the scale 75 colors for this tutorial I will try and give some similar colors from other manufacturers. So for example if you don't have this then Corvus Black from Games Workshop might be a nice alternative. It's a very, very, very dark grey and almost black that isn't quite anywhere near as satiny as the rest of the Games Workshop line. The Scale 75 scale colour range does happen to be my preferred line of paints, which is why I'm using them in this tutorial. Areas that I'm looking to cover in this are his trousers, his boots, any sort of wraps over the shins. Um, I'm doing this on the belt and any straps that are holding any pouches or grenades to his trousers. Uh, I'm also painting the straps holding any bits of armor onto him. A lot of these orc boys have a circle or a pentagon shaped armor panel in the chest or in the middle of their back and they've got shoulder straps that basically turn their trousers into dungarees so I'm painting those in this black color as well. For the first highlight of the black leather, I will be coming in with Eclipse Grey from Scale 75. And this is a very dark grey, but unlike, say, Skaven Black Dinge from Games Workshop, this airs on the cooler side of tone, where something like Skaven Black Dinge would be quite warm toned in the grey, this is, this is a colder tone. Um, I do like doing the colder tones for doing leather. And with this, I'm painting quite large areas of the black leather and I'm making sure to paint the top surfaces and then most of the area that's going to be sort of black, like this belt here, I'm painting the top ridge, the bottom ridge, and then painting sort of three quarters of the middle. I'm leaving the original black paint in the corners, the recesses, the shadows, and any areas which I think will have seen less wear and tear. And I'm going to be going around the model and picking out all the defining shapes on these areas. So for example, on the, on the buttocks here, I am picked out the stitches down the middle, and then I'm painting the majority of the seat of the trousers, basically leaving that black in the shadow and picking out the raised areas of the fold with this eclipse gray. And as you can see, although it's a dark gray, it's got that lovely cold gray tone. If I was to recommend doing this using GW paints, I'd recommend adding a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey into your original black paint, your Corvus Black colour. I'm not, there isn't an exact match for this from Games Workshop. And with this, I'm almost doing an all over highlight, leaving that black in the shadows. If you do feel like you've gone too far with this grey, wait for it to dry and then come back with your original black tone and start redefining shadows. Remember there's no right or wrong way to do this. The more grey paint that you use here, the more worn and sun bleached these black areas and leather pouches are going to be. Depends how tatty you want your orcs to look. Orcs tend to be quite a ragtag group, so having beat up bits of cloth that have long since lost their original colour and have started to fade and stretch really lends us to their ragtag aesthetic. And so it's just a matter of keeping the paint thin and going around the model and painting in these areas. 
Remember on areas such as his knee here that we want to focus on areas where the lights would hit. So right up by his waist, you probably don't want to paint too much. You want to focus on giving that highlight on areas where the light is going to hit. And it's going to start to give you that lovely gradient and really sell the effect. On these straps here, even though they're in shadow, I'm still making a point to paint the majority of them. Those straps over his shoulders, where he's going to be moving his arm on and off, is going to be a really heavily worn area of his clothing. So I'm making those sure they're mostly grey, but areas like the deep folds and the waistline of his trousers are going to be much more dark and in shadow. For the last highlight on these black grey trousers and worn leather parts, I'll be coming in with graphite grey from scale 75. And with this, I'm going to be much more selective with my highlighting. I'm going to be picking out all of the stitches on the trousers, and on his belt I've picked up the most raised areas, so that lip at the top and bottom and I'm going to be using this as almost like you'd use an edge highlight. I'm doing very careful fine lines, picking out all the raised folds in the cloth and the bottom of any holes that he might have in the trousers. And I'm doing the odd vertical line and being very gentle with the brush. So you can see how I'm doing these tapping and scratching motions and that gives the impression that the areas of the leather have been handled, they've been moved and they've been faded. On larger areas, such as these, the seat of the trousers, I'm covering over maybe 30 to 40 percent of the previous area that was covered by the Eclipse Grey. And it's just a matter of taking your time with this, and you feel like you've gone too bright. Wait for the paint to dry, and then come back in with your previous paint and start redefining shapes. There's no right or way wrong with this. The lighter you go with this, the more grey this is going to be. And as you can see, this graphite grey is quite a cold grey. We've been airing on the colder side of the spectrum here rather than the warmer side. And I do feel like these colder tones really do allow these varied shapes and folds and textures to really pop on this orc's clothing. As this is just an orc boy, I wouldn't worry too much about getting your fades, your blends, or your highlights perfect. This guy is going to be shoved in a 10, 20, 30 man blob. The idea is that we're defining shapes. Once he's sat in amongst all his friends, it's really going to look a lot more cohesive and a lot more thought out and planned. So keep your paint thin and keep light with the brush and don't be afraid to do gentle dabbing and scratching motions to really enhance the look of this worn and faded appearance. With areas such as the shoulder straps here, I'm using the edge of the brush to focus on more of an edge highlight, and I'm highlighting both sides of this to really show the worn fabric and to add that extra layer of contrast to help these small shapes pop against the rest of the model. And with that final highlight applied, the grey-black fabric on this orc boy is now complete. If you enjoyed this tutorial, why not consider subscribing? It's free of charge, it helps me out, and you get further videos just like this one in your YouTube feed. Now this orc video is part of a series, so if you haven't checked out how I painted the skin, why not go back and check out the previous video? So, until next time folks.